Hello to all of you out there in this great big world that I call social media. This is your brother Dana coming to you from kind of the stormy right now city of Chicago. I want to say a special shalom to all of the precious chosen people of the Most High Yah and to remind you that what we are seeing is only the beginning to the end of you being the tale. So be encouraged. Um, however, today's video is actually um, an, an encouragement for my white evangelical family members. Um, encouragement to encourage you uh, that yes, your king is on the throne, your president, and he is doing mighty things for you. As I watch the news, I see how he has perfectly um, brought this nation to a place that no other president, no other king has ever done. And so I want to offer you this encouragement even during this pandemic to encourage your hearts. And I want to bring to you uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, starting at about verse 8, as I really see the correlation um, in this scripture to what we are experiencing right now, uh, specifically for white evangelical Christians um, that, that are so excited about Trump, the king, that you have asked to lead you. And, and that's why this scripture is perfect because it says, when Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. Um, and they served at Beersheba. But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. And I can stop right there to say the Democrats, you know, this scripture, you know, should encourage you, uh, Republicans and, and evangelicals, because, yes, President Obama and all these Democrats have done such a horrible job in this country. They have destroyed it. And as we have seen in the news, you know, for instance, Biden's son, who, you know, um, gained financially and wrongfully while his father was the vice president. And so just like Israel at the time, you white evangelical Christians in this country um, said no more, no more to these dishonest Democrats, no more to their dishonest immoral ways. We want a king to lead us. Lead us in our morals and in our Christianity and in our religion and making this nation great again. And so all the elders of Israel gathered as well as, you know, all of those here in the United States. And they said to Samuel that you are old and your sons do not follow your ways, just like the Democrats. So now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, to the Most High Yah. And the Most High Yah, or the Lord, said to him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. And so the story goes on where Samuel again warns the people not to do this. But when we jump to verse 19, in 1 Samuel chapter 8, and I will go back in a moment to read the verses in between. But the people, the white evangelicals, refused to listen to the prophets, to those that are speaking warning. They refused to listen 
They have called me and others that we are race haters, that we are actually undercover Democrats or myself, and said, we want a king. We want Trump over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us just like Trump is doing and fight all our battles. And so as I thought about Trump and everything he is miraculously doing as, as this mighty man, there is so much evidence that he is making your nation great again, or should I say white again, or should I say putting white supremacy back in power. And how is he doing this? Because we know that as he does that, this nation will be a great nation. Because we know that it was the bad, horrible immigrants that he is getting rid of um, that made this nation bad. But now that he's getting rid of them and gotten rid of a lot of them, this nation will rise to be great again. Also, he is making sure that our black brothers and sisters realize their place. And he showed his power and his authority when Kaepernick took a knee to defend his black brothers and sisters. Quickly, King Trump made a mockery and let everybody know that a place for a black person is not to kneel in protest of a white man, but is to serve a white man. He is exposing the lies of the recent um, administration, the Democrats, um, and, and by speaking the truth, he is removing the lies. In his words, he is cleaning the swamp of the horrible Democrats, um, the Muslim women of color, and even reporters of color who are female. He's putting them in their place. He's fighting your battle. He's taking that front line. And I know you are encouraged. He is putting your religion of Christianity back into the schools by, by putting the Ten Commandments back, by declaring Christmas and Easter. He's praying and, and having evangelicals gladly come around him and pray for him and putting even like Paula White to walk around the White House. And as she does, she has declared because of her walking that this White House with King Trump is now set apart as holy ground. Her words, not mine. All of these things do not come from an article, but come from the very mouth of King Trump and his cabinet. He is also putting an end to homosexuality and allowing you to fire somebody that you find out is a homosexual, as well as stopping abortion and bringing an end to that. And that is why I know, these are just a few examples, why you must be so incredibly encouraged. And so just today, I just see how, and that's why I want to encourage, encourage you further, that everything seems like it is coming into place for you, white, evangelical, Gentile. Because not only did I hear it on the news, but I heard it from my mom's mouth that lives in southern Minnesota that Trump is no longer or is going to order that all of the meat packing companies will remain open because when they're closed, there is a back 
load of animals, pigs and, and cattle, that need to be slaughtered, that need to be butchered, that need to be put onto our shelves so we can eat. And since these factories are closed due to this coronavirus, he is now mandating that they, under some national law or ordinance, or I, I don't know all the political terms, but King Trump is saying that they will not be able to close because in a week or so they predict that there will be a shortage of meat. And that encourages me because I know that this fits right in line to you, my white evangelical Christian Americans because number one, you have been protesting that the government should not tell you that you have to remain in your home, stay at home, shelter in place. And as a white male, I know that the, the closest thing or the beginning stages of communism is martial law. And shelter at home or stay in home or in your place, to me and to you, I know is another word or is the first um, um, process of putting into place martial law. So this is perfect. Trump is ordering that these meat plants remain open or reopen. What a perfect time. Because now all of you white evangelicals and white Americans who say that you do not need to stay at home now do not have to stay at home. You can go and you can work which will help the unemployment rate in these meat markets. And guess what? There's positions because all of the bad immigrants that were working these jobs because at the time we as white Americans would not lower ourselves to do that. Now that your king has got rid of them, there's plenty of job openings. So now not only does it allow you to come out of the house, it also allows you to work in the places where the bad immigrants were taking your jobs. It also allows you to keep this economy from crashing. And as many Republicans and Christians and pastors in the white evangelical faith has said very clearly, some people will have to die. We might have to sacrifice certain individuals, elderly, in order to open up America so that our economy will not crash. Hey, you or your family members, I'm sure, would see it as a sacrifice. They would see it as a martyr for Jesus Christ to die to save this nation. So I don't know about you, but you as my white evangelical, conservative, Christian, Trump supporters, followers, and worshipers should be so encouraged that everything that you wanted your king to do in making your nation white and great again is actually happening. But I also need to now remind you of the verses that I skipped, which are found again in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 8 to 18. I stopped at verse 10. And so now I'm going to start at verse 11, and I'm going to read down to verse 18 because when we serve the God of white supremacy, when we serve a God that we have created in our own image so that we can be supreme, or when we serve a God that, that allows or that puts us in this position or that we find then a king that will serve our and our own alone interests. 
there is always there is always another side to the coin. He said, this is what the king, he saying this, is God, is the Most High Yah, the true Most High Yah. He said, this is what the king or Trump who will reign over you will claim as his rights. I don't know about you, but Trump makes it clear all the time what his rights are as the president, the king of the United States of America. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and his horses. And they will run in front of his chariots. So, no, he's not out in the front line to protect you. Your sons and daughters will be in front of him. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties. And others to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be performers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and your vineyards and your olive groves and give them to his children, his attendants, his upper echelons. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, and trust me, that day is right around the corner. But when that day comes, the word of God of the Most High Yah in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 18, when that day comes to you, my white evangelical Christian followers, you will cry out for relief from the king that you have chosen to worship. But the Most High Yah will not answer you in that day. To him that has an ear, may he hear what the words of the Most High Yah is speaking to white evangelical Christian America who has elected their king, Trump, and believe that this man is as perfect as your other Messiah that you call Jesus Christ. To him that has an ear, remember the Most High Yah is faithful in his warning of what is about to come. Shalom.